What are we doing today? I can't believe you didn't believe me. I I can. You remember that? You remember that time that you sent me a recording through a candy dish to convince me that your camera was broken? <laughs> or all of the it other works. times when you said I can't hear you, but you actually could. It worked so well. <laughs> oh man, the boy who cries wolf. He You're the boy who cries. Eaten. I can't hear you. He eventually gets eaten by the wolf. Well, turns out the cops that trap speeders outside of your church will not care to that's help true. you. And that's the thing we talked about before we started recording. Right. There's a lot of things. There's no right. context for you guys, both of you listening. Yeah. Good times. I think we're still on uh, this well called articles. And I think we get to talk about every Lutheran's favorite soapbox, the papacy. I like that we're just sort of starting it that way. Like, here's something that I get to be aggressively angry about that's probably not going to affect your life. Let's spend <laughs> some time listening. Right. Isn't that the truth? Uh, I was actually uh, hoping that maybe that's how we could uh, 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 address this. Because, uh, again, yes, this uh, podcast, as everything with uh, higher things, I've been told, is supposed to be for the youths. Um <laughs> And so hopefully there's a couple youths that actually listen to this. Um, so for them, or even not for them, for the five and a half other people who listen, half. Um, how does this actually affect them? Like before we kind of talked about uh, the invocation of saints and, and that and the mass and the mass works because from the outside looking in, it, it looks like the same thing that we, what we do at the Lutheran church and what the Catholics do. There's some, there's some things that you can point out, but really you're like, what, how, how is it any different? So we talked about all those differences <clears throat> here. It just seems like the, the Lutheran's throwaway line is uh, uh, we hate the Pope. And, but how does that play out into everybody's daily life? Right. Um, especially because the Pope's kind of a, a, a He's a pretty laid back dude right now. Um, yeah. And it just makes you sound angry all the time. And, well, that's that's how we do our politics, not our church, kids. Um, can, can, I ju- can, can I just uh, spitball something? Can you just? Um, it, I don't know if you saw what the Pope is, is trying to do uh, in today's world. Uh, uh, I don't watch world. the news. Okay, so he's sitting in the Vatican, right? And he wants to sit. right, and he wants to uh, he wants to go to uh, Kiev, right? That's the that's the way you say it now, right? Now it's not Kiev, it used to be Kiev forever, and now it's Kiev. He wants to go to Kiev and talk to changing. the president of the Ukraine, uh, but he also wants to go to uh, to Moscow and speak with Putin. Hmm. Um, he uh, and the thing is. And maybe we can kind of talk about this a a little bit, or maybe this won't have anything to play about it. Um, But he seems to be uh, trying to be peacemaker, right? And for all of us, uh, maybe that we would think that's a good thing. Um, But the Pope kind of thinks he has a special authority to be peacemaker, doesn't he? Right. So, I mean, that's, that's really what the whole thing's about is who's in charge, who's in charge of the church, who's in charge of what the church has to say about things that are going on in the world where do we sort of get an answer for that and um i think it matters especially because you you start with the idea that people mess up you start with the idea that people are wrong uh and you, you carry that forward and then you just put one guy in charge of everything absolutely like where in the world has that ever worked out just to have one guy in charge and not be allowed to be questioned right <clears throat> it 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 never works. I mean, unless that one guy is Christ. Right. Um, right. So unless the Pope were to, like, make himself equal to Christ, um, th- mm. it would never work out. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of basically what Luther's uh, kind Enter of issue Enter the because, soapbox. Right. I mean, that's the issue, right? Um, and I think you said it right. Uh, in today's day and age, the, the, the papacy... It it seems to have lost its luster in our in our uh, society, um, 
it, even within the last couple of, of generations, and maybe that's just with the, the entirety of uh, the, the global Christianity and global church kind of uh, on the decline. Um, but the Pope doesn't really have a, 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 a place to stand and nobody takes him serious anymore. Um, mm. But there was a time when if the Pope spoke a word, the world listened. Not just the church, but the world listened. Right. Like, I, I, I don't remember, because uh, I wasn't alive, but I remember hearing about uh, JFK being elected and everybody freaking out because he was a Catholic and they thought that, like, the Pope was now in charge of the country. Right. Um, and I guess, theoretically, if that were true, that'd be scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do we yeah, care think, so much about this other than it's a rock we can throw at somebody who's not in the room? Because <laughs> we love throwing rocks at people. Okay, but there's got to be we a We love thing the low-hanging fruit. We love throwing rocks. But you're right. There's got to be an actual uh, theological point to all this mm -hmm. and why this actually matters, right? Right. So um, it could be that the Pope is not according to divine law or God's word, the head of all Christendom. That, that you're not in charge of me. And I guess, you know, that that's an important thing to recognize that when we sit down to say, what saith the Lord, we should know that it's not changing because he already spoke it. We should know that it's something that you can depend on because it's not coming wholly from a sinner. And we can also have stuff to compare it to that is also going to hold up, right? So like inside of this, if, if it's um, just from a sinner, well, then you have to deal with the fact that it might be wrong. If it's just from you and you can sort of overspeak, overstep everybody who's spoken before you, well, it's on one hand, I guess, maybe a little bit tempting because you always have like a fresh new perspective for whatever scary things happening in the world. But you also sort of say then that all of the scriptures thus far haven't spoken to today. They were only for other people. And so I need something more. And that... Uh, that that those things that were said before weren't actually so dependable because well they changed right <clears throat> um the interesting thing about the papacy the pope and all of that is during luther's time uh it had the papacy had gotten to a point where yes they were the vicar of christ on earth and they had put themselves at this position uh so so that eh, way up here past the camera right the highest position <clears throat> uh so that salvation uh had to come under the umbrella of the papacy right uh so that it and, and luther will say this in the small called articles it, it's not enough that i believe in jesus and understand justification um but if i'm not under the umbrella of the papacy uh then i'm outside of salvation that's bad. That's that's where it had gotten during at Luther's point, and truth be told, uh, although Vatican II might have uh, loosened that a little bit, um, that still is is kind of an official statement from the Cath the Roman Catholic Church, uh, where uh, the Pope is still standing as the vicar, um, and all authority uh, has to come through him. So that if, if you actually uh, look at the doctrine within the Roman Catholic Church, not ask your average Roman Catholic parishioner, but you go to the actual doctrine that that is what it's founded on. Um, <clears throat> the sins that your pastor uh, uh, forgive you um, in the divine service or in private confession and absolution, according to uh, Roman Catholic doctrine, um, are not forgiven uh, because your pastor is not underneath uh, this apostolic succession. Uh, he's not receiving this authority from the Pope, and therefore he's not in the office of pastor in order to forgive sins. The keys aren't uh, in the, the, the congregation's hand to be handed over to the pastor to be spoken to you and for you. Um, and it almost goes, I, I don't think they would go this far with, with baptisms, uh, because I think they do have the understanding of um, uh, emergency baptisms. Um, but in regards to the Lord's Supper, I mean, I think if you really ask the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church, um, what you receive is is not for you. It's so, farce. Um, I, I mean, it actually does go so far as baptism. There was a news article uh, not that long ago about a, a, a whole ministry of a priest being uh, basically 
undone because he didn't say the formula the right way. He he added uh he didn't add the thes or something. Um, yeah, but that no, it was it, instead of I baptize you, it was we baptize. Oh you. yeah, yeah, yeah. He made it. He made it a plural. But I think that's a different uh, a different question because he was actually a priest, and Whoa. so the question was: Is the formula correct as opposed to as a Lutheran pastor? At, to- at the same time, though, it's a question of where does certainty come from, and this is why I think that they're they're at least a little bit connected. So, uh, to the Roman Catholic, they would say, "Why are you questioning?" And it comes from the Church, which is giving you Jesus. Um, Whereas the Lutheran would say, why are you questioning that it comes from the mouth of Jesus? And it, it seems like a great idea to sort of unite the two. Um, but but here's the thing. Um, what happens then when the church errs and it's no longer speaking the word of Jesus? You're, you're sort of grabbing hold of one and you're saying they have to be against each other now or one has to win out over the other. Uh, whereas if it's simply, well, what's what's it say in in the word of God? Why are you worrying about it? as opposed to what's this guy saying I have to do because of it. When you sort of grab hold of salvation and you put it through an institution, even a God-instituted institution, uh, what you have then is something that is sort of grown beyond his word. Um, And so does the tradition of the church inform our practice or does it define our practice? Does it help us understand a good way to do things or, or can it actually just sort of say no this is this is what we do now get on board yeah it should be the former <clears throat> um uh, most certainly that's that's how it should be and that and that's the danger uh certainly with all that i had something i was gonna uh, say uh but i forgot so uh you need to keep rambling i will moment. keep rambling uh because what we we ultimately need in this and it really is again still the chief article remember that chief article justification jesus given for sinners if it takes away from jesus for sinners it does not belong in christendom and here saying the forgiveness that you have is somehow shaped by something else in addition to Jesus. That very bad, no, no likey. It's not, it's not just a soapbox anymore. It's actually something that can be then used to start to pry you further from Christ. And it has to be addressed because whether or not you like the current pope, whether or not you like your current pastor, whether or not you like church politics, the, the whole thing sort of circles into this. Does Jesus want the sins forgiven? Well, why then are there extra steps to get it? Why are there extra people? Why is there middle management? Right. <clears throat> right. Um, and the whole idea within the papacy is, uh, is that this is, uh, this is by divine right. Um, and I think the Lutherans will, uh, as you alluded to, um, I think, um, the Lutherans will state, and Luther doesn't so much here. He actually takes a, the, the negative spin on it. Later on in the power and primacy of the Pope, which is kind of an appendix to uh, the small cold articles, uh, Melanchthon uh, kind of takes a positive spin on it, basically saying if, if the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church would, would admit uh, that the papacy is not an office held by divine right, um, but is still a maybe a good thing to have uh, so that uh, the political things of the church can actually be worked out in appropriate and, and, and God-fearing way, um, then we might even be able to get on board with that, with sitting under the Pope. Uh, the, the problem is, is uh, they have this idea that the papacy is by divine right uh, put there and put there not just for political purposes to make sure everything runs smoothly, but in regards to ecclesiastical churchly stuff of the forgiveness of sins and dictating where and, and how salvation is actually uh, given and received. And that's the whole issue. That's the problem that the, the Lutherans have with the, with the papacy, even still to this day. Right. It, it's not that we're questioning whether or not there should be pastors, something that, that sort of gives you Jesus, because that's to us what a pastor is. It's, it's the person who gives you the words and gifts of Jesus. That's all. Um, it, it's that as we start to do this, when you start to add to those words and promises and gifts of Jesus, or, add, uh, or, or, or even just sort of say, this can in, exist independent of the words and gifts of Jesus, I have an issue. Right. So, so let me ask you this, because we often hear, again, uh, as uh, Lutherans, whether they're pastors or lay people, I remember as a youth hearing this and loving to tout this uh, as, as, as a, a high schooler, um, uh, 
uh, that the Pope or the papacy is the Antichrist. Now, we don't have those words being said here, uh, although he alludes to Revelation chapter 12 or whatever, um, Luther does. So maybe implicitly he does that. Um, what, what does that mean? And do we still hold that? And how then can we actually speak that truth in love to our Roman Catholic neighbor or friend who's on our baseball team and they heard the Lutherans think that the, the Holy Father is the, the is the Antichrist. Right. What do it, we say? It, it does say that. It, it says this teaching shows forcefully that the Pope is the true end Christ or Antichrist. Oh, that's quoting, right. First uh, John yeah, chapter right. two. Um, but it, it's it's first let's let's define the word because it sounds really really demonic. Like it, it sounds like somebody who is very very intentionally trying to um, do bad things under the guise of good things. When inside of this, it's it's really just anti. Christ. So apart from Christ, uh, against this. So you are either saved by Jesus or by something else. If it's something else, that's that's anti-Christ. And so if you think that you are saved by drinking all the apple juice, apple juice is the anti-Christ. John, John talks, uh, uh, the, the evangelist and apostle John uh, uses uh, the, the language antichrist, I think, the most uh, in, in his epistles and in, uh, obviously, in Revelation. Um, in his epistles, he'll use it that way. He'll, he'll talk about the, how the antichrist must come, and indeed many antichrists have come. And he'll, he'll talk about it in that way. But then in, in the book of Revelation, there does seem to be a bit more of a uh, ardent um, not just uh, uh, anybody can be Antichrist, but uh, something specifically set up. And I think this is where the Lutherans do get on their soapbox, maybe sometimes a little too harshly. Maybe we like climbing on there uh, too much. Um, but the Antichrist or an Antichrist with a capital A, I think maybe, is, is anything that actually sets itself up within the church uh, claiming, like you said, to, to have the keys uh, where they don't have the keys, uh, to, to, to set themselves up as, as Christ, where all authority comes from them and that they get to dictate, right? And so inevitably, like you said, going back to this, the, the chief article, it's uh, at, the very, at the very least, it's adding to that. At the very worst, it's completely taking away the article of justification, Christ for you on the cross, free and clear, you do nothing for it. And that's, that's the big issue. And that's why we, uh, I think appropriately, although we, it, it, it hurts our ears for whatever reason to, to use that language appropriately. So we can say the office of the papacy is antichrist because we see it as taking away the article of justification. But that's when we're talking with our friends, I think that's where we have to start. We have to start with where is salvation granted and given and who does it? And if we can get to, oh, it's Jesus, cross, and Jesus does it through word and sacraments. If we can get there with our friends, then maybe we can continue on that conversation and say, okay, so how does the papacy hurt or harm that? Right. Um, and so this is really it, though. Uh, does it take away from Jesus? Does it take away from the cross? Or, or are you trying to add something to it? Because even if you say, like, I'm not trying to take away Jesus, when you say Jesus and, that means that there's there's more than Jesus. Right. So you're adding to it. You're saying there's something else that must be done. Some other hoop that must be jumped through in order to receive the free justification. And if there's something else... Uh, then it's no longer the free gospel and free justification. So uh, answer a criticism then. Um, how is that different than baptism, where you have to do something else that's not actually Jesus? Why would we baptize a baby? Or why do you need to go to church? Why can't you just love Jesus in your heart? Well, these are things that we can actually go to Scripture and hear our Lord actually say, right? Go and do this. Um, and, and so we actually hear it because we're not, uh, the, the things of baptism, the things of actually hearing the word and going to church and receiving communion, um, 
this goes back to uh, whether or not our, our tangible bodies, uh, this 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 flesh of ours, um, is worth redeeming. Uh, does does God actually bring salvation to us, not just in this mystical spiritual realm, but does he actually bring it to us in our whole personhood of who we are, mm -hmm. soul and spirit together? That, that's what makes us human is a rational soul and this body of ours. Right. So he actually does that. And, and, and he says it and he institutes it. And he says, yes, yeah, splash water on somebody and say these words so that their ears can hear it. Okay, that's what we'll do. Take, put this food and this drink in your mouth and say these words, and this is what you get. Jesus. Done. That's what we'll. That's what we'll do. You instituted it. That's what we'll do. It's not. It's not Jesus and something. It's Jesus saying, "This Jesus is how you're something. getting me." Yeah. Right. Do it. This is how you're getting me. This is how I'm giving myself to you. Great. So and so, a bit of a if that was there inside of the office of the Pope we okay but it's not and so that that shapes it then we, we might actually be able to say that it is or an argument might be able to be said that it is except that it's it's locked behind five other doors right and, and so if the pope were just a doors. pastor giving the gifts of god we could say you're you want to be in charge of who gets sent where after seminary oh, okay you want to be in charge of putting out this congregation's mad at their priest okay uh but that that's called a bishop right. and you're still just a clergy or or you're a super clergy and if you're a super clergy what superpowers do you have? And if you have superpowers, uh, first, why isn't it flying? And second, where's Jesus? <laughs> right. And at risk of uh, making everybody mad. Do it. Do it right May now. I? Yes, I? right now. Okay. One of my biggest pet peeves uh, Me. within uh, my synodical... Uh, oh. Yeah, that's one of them. Synodical conventions and district conventions. I haven't been to a single... Well, okay, of all the synodical conventions I've been to, it's one. Um, but of all of the district conventions I've been to as well, um, every time uh, that we elect or re-elect uh, a new president... I tried to yawn um, and I tried to we, hide it and I did weird stuff with my mouth. Go. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really weird. It was, I was just gonna let that go, but no, I was just, like, uh, I'm gonna play off that yawn. Wait, no, that's your... way worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, every single convention that I've ever been to, uh, after we elect somebody, uh, we uh, we say a prayer, and that prayer uh, is usually thanking the Holy Spirit uh, uh, for guiding us to electing this individual. To, to a board position. of regents or something yeah right that sounds a little bit against uh this whole idea of the papacy where the papacy is saying this is a divine ordained right and position that the holy spirit has set forth and uh rick that uh, we have uh, pope rick the first uh because it's the holy spirit rick. said so right <laughs> How is that any different than us saying uh, we just voted on uh, Rick to be our uh, synodical president? Uh, thanks be to the Holy Spirit for leading us there. Right. And so you can say thanks be to God the Father through his providence who sustains their earthly gifts. But you're right. I, I can see how that right. would be a different thing. Um, also. Well, and, and, then, and then what? I mean, I, I think the danger, and I, I guess I haven't seen this happen yet, but... What's the danger, if that's the prayer and the mindset, what's the danger of district presidents or, or anybody in elected positions within the church then? The danger is for them to be like, mm, yeah, well, God wants the Holy me Spirit here. Put, so the Holy Spirit put me here. Are guys. you really disagreeing so, with the Holy Spirit? Are you, right. Is that what you want to do? It's amazing that we so, I think, so easily could fall into that trap. And it's a dangerous trap because it sounds good. Um one and two uh we all love power like uh if if you look at the history of the church uh I, I, and we're probably uh, gonna need to wrap up here soon but if you look at the history of the church and how uh the bishop in rome actually uh got to be 
uh, first the the first among equals of all the other bishops, and then actually became not just a bishop but a pope. Um, it's all because of the desire and want for power, and, and it's a slow process, but inevitably it, it gets to the point where uh, he's no longer the first among equals. Uh, all the rest of the bishops don't matter. They all have to actually uh, kneel down and say, yes, this guy is is the man. And really the only way that you can say that then is by saying, oh, well, yeah, God put me here. It's also, me. so speaking of weird yawns, uh, one of the things that I do to my dog that's named Goob that makes him kind of hate me uh, is because I'm a bad person and I do weird stuff. When, when Goob yawns around me, I like to stick my finger in his mouth and poke him in the tongue. <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do. He just freaks out. Yeah. That's a completely related story. It's amazing. Yeah. I contributed. No, you didn't. Hey, there's the cop again. He got somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> they love this street. <laughs> they really do. This is, if, if they are running you low. You seem to love it too. <laughs> if, they, if they need to hit their quota, and I'm not saying that's a thing, uh, right? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's a weird wink. <laughs> I'm but, so self-conscious uh, on if, the video. If Wheat Ridge cops need to uh, hit their quota, uh, yeah, Dudley Street, Dudley at 38, that's where they go. It's a terrible way to invite people to your church. You'll probably get a speeding ticket. Uh, just stay on 38. They don't, yeah, they don't call it 38. They call it Dudley. I don't know what any of the words that you're saying are. The Pope Dudley. joke would have been like, and I can't tell the police that it doesn't count because not two, <laughs> not two keys. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Let's end on a poor note. I got a couple Pope jokes, but... Are they appropriate Pope jokes? Yeah. Okay, we should go then. Yeah. Tell me after. Okay.